So in today's episode, we talk about a glass of water and the ethics behind it. You may have seen his post that was circulating a couple weeks ago on the Uncomfortable BCBA website, but today I've got Shane Spiker and we're talking ethics. I'll slowly crank it up. A You're not really off base though. Like yeah. the thing, like I think that you know, kind of comes back to the idea that like you know, the people you care about are the people that are yeah. the shares of the same values. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Um, so today we're going to talk again with Shane and specifically what we want to talk about is we're just going to kind of off the cuff go with things about ethics, right? Yeah. So what got you, what are, is ethics? Yeah. So and then <laughs> let's dive into why you got interested in it. Yeah. So I think uh, the idea of ethics, the way I learned it was that you have your high standard of service, higher mm -hmm. standard, high, the highest possible standard of practice, right? Okay. And then you've got the legal standard, which is the minimum requirement. Yeah. So a lot of what we do falls within those guidelines. Mm -hmm. You know, we do our best to kind of maintain that legal practice, but we want to do the best that we can, which is essentially do no harm. Yeah. You know, the idea is like we don't want to, we don't want to hurt anybody. We want to do good work. Yeah. Um, staying within our comp, our our, our practice, um, staying within our competencies, and kind of maintaining that, and, and also self policing. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot that goes into it. It's pretty nebulous, but um, yeah. what I find is that. Um, as long as you have like a good idea of what your values are and mm -hmm. how they align with whatever profession you're in, yeah. you're, you're usually pretty cool. How do you go about figuring out what your values are? You know, I try to be as uh, as introspective as possible. I try to pay attention to like what I like to work on, like what I like to see out of the world, what my what my goals are. You know, I always oh, yeah. kind of um, one thing that always stuck to me was uh, there's a professor at FIT that did a lecture and he talked about what gives you the right to change somebody's behavior. Yeah. And I always, that always stuck with me because yeah. you know, I was like, behavior now is so cool. I can do some really cool shit with yeah. this. And then at the end of the day, you know, it's like, okay, you know, this is serious work. Somebody could die. Yeah. And um, that kind of always like, that weighed on me a lot. Yeah. So I think my values came from that idea where it's like, above all else, do good work. Okay. You know? So that's, that's kind of what, that's, that's where I've found a lot of my values from the behavior analytic field and just growing up, you know, my, my parents were always like, just be nice to people. Yeah. And that was, and that was yeah. it. That's where my value yeah. just be nice to people. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I've shared that on this channel actually. <laughs> like we, we just need to treat a human as a human. Yeah. It's, it's pretty simple. It's complex when you get into it. So what are, what are some of the things that are being talked about maybe right now or struggles? So my, my biggest struggle is seeing people talk about water. Okay. As a, as How? a just saying, hey, you know, you can't you can't even accept a glass of water from a client. Uh, okay. That's I struggle with that okay. because not because of the concept. I get the concept. Yep. I get the idea of multiple relationships, and I get yeah. the idea of get getting told. And, and there's a reason why it's there mm -hmm. for sure. Something happened somewhere. It's just like the same thing. Like there's a reason why plastic bags or like different packaging has. Like yeah. don't swallow this. Yeah. Because you know, people yeah. people yeah. do stupid Something, stuff. Something's happening. <laughs> so, <Tide pods>. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, at the end of the day. That's it, it's a great conversation, and, and, and I think it's necessary, but it's not the conversation. And you kind of hear that in ethical debates. Like, yeah. That's that tends to be the focus. Is like you can't accept glass water, multiple relationships, multiple relationships. And yeah. The bigger concern is why are people supervising when they don't have the confidence? Yeah. Why are people practicing outside of their confidence? Why are you not taking the time to problem solve multicultural situations? Yeah, where, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got this idea that gift giving is a critical part of this culture. Yes. Perspective. Yes, it's huge. And it could damage therapeutic. Yeah, it's so, like talk about ther therapeutic alliance. Let me, yeah, yeah. Let me know if I'm off the mark on this, but I've felt like professional ethics um, are set up to be much more form-based, topographical, yeah. and like it shouldn't look like this in the get-go, yeah. rather than is, it a, is that relationship in that example affecting the actual relations that are going on. Right. Right? Yeah, exactly. So I feel like the discussions could point back to that, and I get that that's not as black and white and clear, on, yeah. and you can even like transcend that and see why our, our ethical codes, right, are set up based on that because it's a lot yeah. easier to police. Yeah. You're talking about self-policing, which is a whole nother discussion. Um, but is that valid, do you think? Like, am I looking at that in a weird way? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I think, it, we're, I think... We're a little too topographical in these things and it's more... And less function. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Or like uh, like outcome driven. You know, I think yeah. at the end of the day, you know, what's the outcome of that decision that you're making? Yeah. And that should be the discussion. Yeah. Not as simple as don't accept a gift. It's, yeah. you're not going to accept this gift 
what's the what's the possible outcomes? Like, yeah. why are you making this decision? Which is really cool because that also brings in like this nonlinear approach of it's not just ABC, right? There's other opportunities that are out there that we haven't yeah. matched out. Yeah, okay. there's, there's replacement skills. There's um, there's there's just the the ability to problem solve mm -hmm. is sorely lacking because we uh, we tend to be so reliant on the code to give us our direction. Yeah. Instead of problem solving those yeah. challenges, like working in multi working in any multicultural discipline, yeah. you have to be aware that the ethics that we have, and I think. Uh, uh, a colleague of mine said it really well that you know our ethics come from a very Western standpoint, like mm -hmm. a Western culture standpoint, and there's so much Eastern culture that's not included in that. Yeah. Um, working internationally and kind of seeing what it's like in the Czech yeah. Republic yeah. or in Australia, totally different cultures, yeah. and there are different implications for the way our ethics are structured. Yeah. So if I was going to point people to something, I know uh, Vargas, Ernie Vargas, had done something, uh, wrote a book on looking at ethics from a functional standpoint. Yeah. And definitely going to link that down below. Low. It's not in print, but it, you can pick up some copies. Yeah. Um, and then I would say, when you're talking about the Eastern culture kind of coming in, some of the acceptance commitment therapy literature has brought in some of that. Yeah. Now, I don't think that they can go buy a book and that's your solution here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the old books in the Context Press series mm -hmm. will talk about these same things. They have like an ethics. Book. Yes. Yeah. And they have an ethics. Uh, Ethics and Disabilities, it's not quite the title, I'm getting close, mm -hmm. that they also talked about there. So I'm gonna yeah. link both of those. Anything else we can point people to? I just got a book on, um, I can't remember the, the author's first name, I think it's Ger Garen? Okay, not sure. I don't know. Yeah. I, well, I'll find out, we'll I'll find out, we'll make sure you get it. Yeah. Um, but it was about a uh, behavior analyst in Australia that no lived way. in uh, New Zealand with okay. an Aboriginal tribe for a year before he started implementing any behavior change procedures. He's a behavior analyst? He's a behavior analyst, what? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's down in the bookstore right now. No way. Yeah, it's okay. good. Uh, it's like, I forget what it's called, but I'll, we'll make sure you get it. Yeah, And okay. then uh, the social validity manual is pretty neat to be able to kind okay. of like check and, and like reframe what you're looking at from a social standpoint. Okay. So awesome. Yeah. Thanks. In future meetups, when I see you again next, I want to dive into the self-policing. Yeah. So we're going to leave the self-policing talk hanging. Yeah. Let me know what you think about self-policing down below and all these other things. <laughs> all right. Thanks, cool. man. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into this and only if you're into it, please like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference. Share, tag friends. That is how this word will kind of grow. This channel gets stronger and we can produce more and more content. There's a little bit more info <clears throat> there's a little bit more info on how you can kind of support and help this channel grow afterwards if you want to stick around as well as what's coming tomorrow so with that said thank you shane appreciate the time um that's your daily beat Observations podcast. Hey, usually you're in here. You, you probably get some hate mail now and then, right? Yeah. Let's talk about that today. All right, sounds good.